Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. My friends, I woke up this morning and I told myself I need a day off. There is no way in hell, there is nothing on this earth that is going to warrant me making yet again another 24 seven bad news video. But 9 a.m. rolled around and my computer is already teeming with unfortunate news that must, that absolutely must be parlayed to you. So here we go. But before we get into all the talk about droughts, wildfires, water shortages so severe, it's causing social upheaval in a country near you. Nuclear incidents in Ukraine, major war breaking out in the South China Sea, uh, missiles being shot over Taiwan and all sorts of craziness like that. We need to reiterate the mantra, be prepared, not scared. Because guys, the reason why I can consume information like, like this day in and day out and remain so composed about it is because I'm prepared to endure it. And that occurred to me yesterday that there's a lot of people out there who are just maybe seeing information like this for the first time or just coming into this type of information. They're just coming into preparedness and these people don't have the means to survive three days, much less three months or three years. Or like some people I know, 30 years, okay? And uh, if, you're, if you're prepared for this, it shouldn't be anxiety inducing. Now, if you are new to this, don't freak out, okay? Don't get mad and say, oh, well, if something like that is not happens, I'm just gonna die anyways. No, you're not. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be the first to turn into one of those ravenous cannibals, trust me. Uh, but, you know, don't be the annoying neighbor or the annoying friend or family member that won't shut up about the moon landing hoax or, you know, that level of insanity with it. Just start where you're at. That's it. The reason why we communicate with such urgency about this stuff is because everything we talk about, I think, based on my best research, is inevitable. That doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, but inevitable means it's going to happen. So don't lose your head, live your life, love your life, but be prepared to be more self-reliant when the institutions within your society start to break down. Those ones that you rely on for sustenance right now may not always be there. Now, let's just get right to this. We need to talk about this story today because I just read a report in the New York Times that gives a in-depth breakdown of how severe the water shortages are in Mexico right now. And I know you're, you're saying water shortages in Mexico. Isn't China on the brink of World War III? Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about nuclear incidents in Ukraine. We're going to talk about all kinds of crap that's going on all around the world. But I need to, to share this with you guys because nobody is really talking about this. And I wasn't aware of how bad it is. OK, we've all seen the drought monitor in the United States. Uh, this, what I'm going to talk about today, is going to lead to more illegal immigration. And guess what these people are going to be greeted by? This, water shortages in Lake Mead, Lake Powell, that are now at historic lows. Okay, we're talking about water levels so low that uh, they're now talking about these lakes being in Deadpool status, meaning that they're not going to be able to power the hydroelectric plants that are associated with them. And one thing to keep in mind is that these reservoirs are nearly a thousand feet deep. A lot of these reservoirs are like this. Okay. So when you're losing 200 feet at the top of this reservoir here, that's a lot more volume than at the bottom. So that's why this is so scary and the drying up. And I don't have a comparison map showing the drying up of those lakes. But anyways, on to Mexico. This is crazy, guys. Listen to this. An extreme drought has seen taps run dry across the country with nearly two thirds of all municipalities in Mexico facing a water shortage that is forcing people in some places to line up for hours for government water deliveries. Why aren't we hearing about this at all? The lack of water has grown so extreme that irate residents block highways and kidnap municipal workers to demand more supply. This is what SHTF is going to look like, guys. And if you haven't seen the movie New Order, it's called New Order. It's about the complete collapse and upheaval of Mexico. Go and watch it. You will not be disappointed. That is what 
SHTF is going to look like. And that was what Sri Lanka was a trial run for. And that is what every leader and every person of exceptional 0.001% privilege fears on this green earth. The numbers underlining the crisis are startling. In July, eight of Mexico's 32 states were experiencing extreme to modern drought. Eight of 32 states is kind of nominal information because it doesn't say which states have the most population, but this is the more startling figure, resulting in 1,500 of the country's 2,400 municipalities confronting water shortages. The situation has gotten so dire that a vis visiting journalist could not find any drinking water for sale at several stores, including Walmart. Even buckets, too, are scarce at local stores or being sold at astronomically high prices. It's important that we look at these types of scenarios because these are things that you wouldn't expect. These are things that we as preppers wouldn't anticipate. Buckets of all things? Yeah, buckets because people need to either transport water or collect water. This is why water is absolutely so important. Here in Canada, it's fairly abundant. But just because it's abundant doesn't necessarily mean that you live near it. So you need to have a way to transport that water or pump that water, whatever the case might be. Here you have to chase water, said Claudia Munez, who's 38, whose household is often running out of water for up to a week. In a moment of desperation, people explode, she said. About, and she's talking about the violence that has flared up as people fight over water. Okay, so this image here, guys... This is an image of riot police who are standing guard in Monterey where demonstrators have called for a protest and a blockade to demand more water. There's actually protests to have more water on the North American continent. That is very concerning in light of that current drought monitor situation. We're about a couple years away from this kind of stuff happening in the continental USA as well as Europe. We're going to talk about that situation in a minute, which is equally crazy. Monterey's water supply, one dam reached 15% of its capacity this year, with the other reaching 42%. The rest of uh, the city's wa water comes from aquifers, many of which are also running low. And of course, the biggest aquifer in the United States, the Ogallala aquifer is also at historic lows and not being replenished fast enough to uh, that it's being drained. Uh, today the government distributes a total of 9 million liters of water daily to 400 neighborhoods. Okay, every day Pipas, Pipas, large trucks filled with water and pipes for distribution fan out across Monterey and its suburbs to tend to the needs of the driest neighborhoods, often illegal sep settlements that are home to the poorest residents. These types of situations are going to only increase on top of all the war, on top of all the supply chain woes, on top of all the contagions and the emergencies declared over chicken pox or whatever the hell is going on, all right? Guys, I'm telling you, man, if you're not prepping, you are, you're probably playing a video game or on some sort of sharing on TikTok or something like that. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something's wrong with your brain there, bruh. Look at this. This is that thing I was talking about. So you see the reservoir here. When they say that it's down like 20% from water levels, that doesn't take into account that the volume in that top 20% is massive compared to this. So I would say that the actual volume is much, much lower, but go and research that. Anyways, um, yeah, Lake Powell, Lake Mead approaching Deadpool status, not good. The Dutch government has also declared a water shortages. The government said that drinking water supplies are not threatened. However, uh, new measures will, uh, that could change in the coming weeks as a result of the situation worsening. Water authorities in parts of the country already have put restrictions on farmers spraying crops with water and several small ferries crossing rivers being forced out of service due to low water levels. Some people are going to say, oh, you're trying to control the food supply. Well, guess what? Most of water is used in irrigation. And if they don't, you know, take it away from that to 
go to your taps, then where are you going to get the water, right? Then people are going to complain that there's no water to drink. So the government is in a bit of a bind here. Wildfires in Europe burned to the second biggest area on record. Let me see if I have a visual for you guys on this. Oh, that's Thai Wildland. We'll go there next. I don't have the visual offhand. Actually, no, I think I do. I think I do have this one somewhere. There's just too much stuff. See, I woke up this morning, I said, taking a day off. And the universe said, no, nope, you aren't. Where is this? And of course I failed. Oh, there it is. Okay, of course, the last one I check. So far, 2022, this is the amount of forest that has been burned. Okay, this is the record year, which I believe was 2006 or one of those years and this is the average okay so we're already way above average already on pace to at least be the second most uh burnt year on record but quite likely will be could potentially if there's another major fire that flares up or if the ones that are currently raging right now cannot be stopped uh, we're going to see a record year in europe in terms of wildfires so that of course is not good uh, the uk is facing crop shortages expected due to water scarcity once again this recurring theme of water scarcity see what's happening guys is that the interior regions of these countries and continents this is where all the stuff is grown the waterfalls all of that what is food primarily well a big part of food like 78 percent of it is water is contained within the food it gets trucked out and that's why you're seeing uh, more more moisture and water in the coastal regions than you are in the interiors the droughts are happening in the interior regions whereas you're having these crazy flash flooding incidents on the coastal regions um, I'm not sure if this is related to what I just told you, but that is my theory. That's my own personal theory and it's untested, but I do think that there's got to be something to do with all of the, the food and the crops being grown in the centers of the countries. This is usually where, you know, you have those uh, far reaching like plains and the flatlands where you can grow uh, these staple crops. And every year, year after year, you're trucking out actual water eventually you know where is that water ending up in the water cycle well it's probably you know it's probably not ending up it's probably going where the population centers are and where the most of the population centers they're in the coastal regions by the cities that's where most people on this planet live anyways just a theory of mine little sidebar there even in France, where they're seeing record temperatures this week, all of Europe has seen, like, temperature records have been completely destroyed this year. But in France, nuclear power plants have been forced to cut their outputs because there is concern about uh, the rivers getting too warm, and that can have an adverse impact on the surrounding ecology. Okay, so you're talking about rivers so low and so warm that not even nuclear power plants can function. And that is not the only thing. There is this issue right now with the Rhine River drying up, which they're saying it could become the Achilles heel of European energy. It's just one crisis after another. So this is the Rhine River here. I don't know much about it. I've never been there, uh, but this is the news. Okay, so... There is a downward trend in the Rhine River, of course. 2018, I believe, was the lowest on record. 22 is or sorry, 2022 is approaching those levels. And what does this all mean? Well, this means that ships cannot transport goods through the Rhine River. And what does this mean for energy? Well, get this, guys. Because Europe is now being forced off of Russian gas, they're now more reliant on coal. A lot of this coal gets there through the ships that have to go through the Rhine River. If you can't get that coal via the ships through the Rhine River, guess what? You got to truck it in or do something like that. Why do you need this coal? Because everybody's firing their air conditioners on all cylinders to stay cool. And, you know, the more you do that, the hotter it gets. You see how this is just a perpetual 
SHTF positive feedback loop. I mean, this is why I say it's inevitable. The whole thing is going to collapse. You got to be prepared. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but it's inevitable. So the Rhine River is shrinking, my friends. And uh, just like all rivers around the world are shrinking. And this is uh, due to the lack of uh, the receding glaciers. All of these rivers that we see come from a glacier somewhere. When those glaciers finally melt completely, it's game over. Shizzy's going to hit the fizzy. Now, all I've talked about in this video is the lack of water. I've barely spared five minutes here to talk about Zaporizhia, which uh, a lot of the uh, people at the International Atomic Energy Agency are saying that the situation is out of control, that there is going to be a nuclear incident at some point. The plant is still operating. Ukrainian staff under Russian control. The International Atomic Ag Agency has said that every principle of nuclear sa safety has been violated one way or the other, and we cannot allow that to continue. The Russians are claiming that the Ukrainians are shooting at the facility. Meanwhile, everybody else is accusing the Russians of using the facility as a nuclear shield because they know that the Ukrainians won't shoot it because they don't want to completely irradiate their country so they're storing weapons they're doing this they're doing that so it's a big foobar like situation and they're saying that it's only a matter of time before the shizzy hits the fizzy on that front in other news moving to taiwan so taiwan has fire or sorry china has fired missiles over taiwan for the first time this is the first time this has ever happened and also you probably know that oh here's that video this is a bit of a propaganda patriotic video from the Chinese. This is them launching these missiles over the Taiwan Strait, over Taiwan today. Okay, we're just going to cut that off so we don't get some sort of copyright strike. And yeah, so these are where all of these live fire exercises are now occurring within 10, I think it's 10 miles of the actual... Taiwan country here. So they're really, really pushing it right now. Um, this is an escalation, the likes of which we've never seen before. And it's important to remember that all wars nowadays are, they start with exercises, okay? Because that's the only way you can really disguise a war and create that sort of ambiguity is if you're doing an exercise because you can see everything from space. Okay? It's impossible to amass an army here without the Americans seeing it. So the Chinese have to do exercises, just like the Russians. Remember before the Ukraine war, they said, oh, it's just an exercise. You know, oh, these are just normal bases there. And of course, eventually you push the button and everybody gets activated. Many suspect that that is what is happening here. Although a lot of people think that the Chinese are not ready yet to do this and that they're going to take their time with the whole situation. Uh, it's also known that there have been uh, Chinese troops participating now in the Donbass because the idea is, is that the Chinese armed forces want to gain experience on the battlefield and see firsthand the performance of Western weapons and the NATO tactics that they will sooner or later encounter in the Taiwan war. So there is confirmation that there's military equipment coming from China as well as Chinese troops in the Donbass, of course, in limited numbers. But nonetheless, that is something which is happening. Now, this whole, this whole thing that we have going on right now here, uh, according to an English language government mouthpiece of the Chinese government, they're now calling the five day drill that have, has commenced as a rehearsal for a unification operation. So this here, this is all a rehearsal is what they're saying. And uh, like, look at all these missiles that were fired over Taiwan. They even flew drones well into Taiwanese airspace and the Taiwanese did not shoot them down. They're, you know, it's, I, I'm not sure if the Chinese are hoping that the Taiwanese are going to, you know, cross that line where they shoot something down to give the Chinese a reason 
to response or what exact, what kind of response is the Chinese looking for? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, what else do we got going on here? So exercises blockading Taiwan are to become routine. And in addition to that, Japan's foreign ministry has said Thursday evening that five missiles fired by China have landed within Japan's exclusive economic zone. So they're pretty pissed about this as well. Interestingly, Nancy Pelosi was snubbed by the South Korean president who was on vacation and didn't have time to meet with her. South Korea, in spite of uh, the strong ties between the North Koreans and the Chinese, is... It does a lot of trade. They're the number one trading partner with China. So they have to walk a fine line with uh, where they show their allegiances because they don't really want to piss the Chinese off too much because then they might unleash the North Korean attack dog on them. And it's important to remember that this is a new height of escalation, that this is the first time that this has happened. They have flown planes into the airspace of Taiwan, but they've never conducted exercises so close to Taiwan and they've never shot missiles over Taiwan, to the best of my knowledge. If you guys know otherwise, let me know in the comments section below. But my friends, I gotta go because I didn't even want to do a video today. But remember, be prepared, not scared. We're gonna be releasing a video tomorrow that we did with Rod Giltaka of the CCFR. If you don't know what that is, You'll know tomorrow, it's very, very important. We're gonna talk about the number one thing that every single person who is, who considers themselves a preparedness-minded individual needs to do right now, especially if you're a Canadian. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow, guys. Stay safe, enjoy summer, because here in Canada, at least, it's already halfway over. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.